So today is a day of great importance in the United States. You could say that it's a look back on the civil rights movement and what has been accomplished, and even more so, what still needs to be accomplished. On the third Monday of January each year, we look back and remember Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who is seen by many as the greatest civil rights leader in the history of this country. Ronald Reagan signed into law that we would observe his birthday, which is January 15th, on approximately that day every year. Ronald Reagan was actually originally against this holiday, but because of pressure from many people who thought that this should be a holiday, he eventually gave in and signed. So today I bring you 13 facts about Martin Luther King Jr. that you probably didn't know. Number one, King's birth name was actually Michael, not Martin. He was born Michael King Jr., on January 15th, 1929. Number two, the day that Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated was not the first attempt on his life. Are you Martin Luther King Jr. was a question that mentally ill Isola Ware Curry asked Dr. King on September 20th, 1958 at a book signing in Harlem. When he said yes, she plunged a seven inch letter opener into his chest. The tip of the blade barely missed puncturing his his aorta. Number three, King did very well in high school. So well, in fact, that he skipped two grades before enrolling at Morehouse College in 1944 at the age of 15. Number four, King's I Have a Dream speech was not the first he gave on the Lincoln Memorial. Before a crowd estimated at about 30,000 people, King delivered his first national address on the topic of voting rights on May 17, 1957. Number five, after earning earning his divinity degree from Pennsylvania's Crozer Theological Seminary, King attended graduate school at Boston University, where he received his PhD. Number six, his father, Martin Luther King Sr., was also a soldier for civil rights, saying that segregation and racism was an affront to God's will. Number seven, on the night that Rosa Parks was arrested for not giving up her seat to a white man on a public bus, E.D. Nixon, head of the local local NAACP chapter met with King and other local civil rights leaders to plan the Montgomery bus boycott. King was elected to lead the boycott because he was young, well-trained, and with solid family connections. He also had professional standing. He was new to the community and had few enemies, and it was felt he would have strong credibility with the black community. Number eight, King was jailed 29 times, most often for acts of civil disobedience obedience, like the time he spent 11 days in a Birmingham, Alabama jail. However, there were times that the punishment was completely overkill for the supposed crime he committed, like the time he was arrested in Montgomery, Alabama for going 30 in a 25 mile per hour zone. Number 9. King learned his famous form of nonviolent protest from another civil rights leader, Mahatma Gandhi. In February 1960, a group of African African American students in North Carolina began what became known as the Greensboro sit-in movement. The students would sit at racially segregated lunch counters in the city's stores. When asked to leave or sit in the colored section, they remained seated, subjecting themselves to verbal and physical abuse. Dr. King encouraged the students to continue nonviolent protests, and by August 1960, 27 cities had abolished their lunch counter segregation laws. Number 10. On August 28, 1963, the March on Washington drew more than 200,000 people in the shadow of the Lincoln Memorial. It was here that King made his famous I Have a Dream speech, emphasizing his belief that someday all men could be brothers. During this speech, he very eloquently stated, I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Number 11. During his last public speech, King said, Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as people will get to the promised land. I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. And 
and I'm not fearing any man. Number 12. The FBI started tracking Dr. King in 1955. The FBI director at the time, J. Edgar Hoover, was obsessed with King and even began tapping his phones and bugging his offices. This fanatical devotion to discredit King intensified when he delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech in 1963. Afterward, an FBI memo called King the most dangerous and effective Negro leader in the country. And number 13, Dr. King was in Memphis, Tennessee to support a sanitation worker strike that was happening. At 6.01 p.m. on April 4, 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was fatally shot while standing on on a balcony outside his second story room at the Lorraine Motel. James Earl Ray was arrested on June 8, 1968 in London at the Heathrow Airport and extradited to the United States where he was charged with this crime. On March 10, 1969, he was sentenced to 99 years in the Tennessee State Penitentiary. Although many people, including King's family, believe that Ray did not commit this murder alone. So those are 13 facts that you probably didn't know about one of the greatest civil rights leaders who ever lived. And on this day, a celebration of his life and birth, may we remember that we've come a long way, but there's still a long way to go. And I say in what may to many people be controversial, as a white man in this country, there is so much that I can't understand about racism and white privilege, but I will say that minorities in this country are treated better than they were a hundred years ago, but their rights still pale in comparison to those that I enjoy. Until we become truly colorblind, until the number of white people pulled over for routine traffic stops matches that of the number of people with brown skin who are pulled over, we still have work to do. Thank you for watching this video today. I know it's not quite as upbeat or cheerful as many I've done, but I really feel that this was an important video to do. I hope everyone has an awesome day and you continue being kind to one.